Cryptozoology is, by its very nature, elusive. Thus, we cannot say that we are exactly bringing you the facts, but we will do our best to help you see these mythical legends as we do. So sit back, relax, and wait. What's that behind you? <laughs> Never mind. Enjoy the show! <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Cryptids on Cryptids. This week, it is episode 15. Good lord. And what are we talking about? Hey guys, uh, I'm Sid. We're doing the Yeti this are week. We... Oh, okay. Because you said good lord when I started to ask that question. So I was worried we were I talking said, about the lord. And no. I was like, I don't think that's a cryptid. <laughs> no. I'm saying <laughs> good lord to the fact that it's episode 15. I'm barely believing that. That's 15 weeks of this. Wow. That's a lot of weeks. <laughs> that's a lot of weeks. How many weeks that's, are in a year? Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. So anyway. I think 52 weeks is a year. So, yeah. Good. We're not even close to a year. I know, but good lord, you know? <laughs> Yeah, still good lord. Still good lord. Still, still good lord. Still what's up with this lord? <laughs> no. We are talking about the Yeti, though, who uh, might technically be a god. Just a little bit. You wanna just get into a little it? bit. You want to get into it? Yeah, I, I would love to get into it. All right. Uh, for the viewers, for the people, for the viewers, for the listeners, for the people at home, uh, I'm going to make a quick disclaimer right here. We're doing the Yeti and not the Abominable Snowman. Those we're going to treat as two different things, given the fact that the Yeti comes from Himalayan folklore and the Abominable Snowman. And the Abominable Snowman comes from the Rudolph movie. Well, it's more specifically like a Western pop culture thing, so we will probably get to him in a future episode, but this one's specifically going to focus on the Yeti. Uh, okay. Yes. So. Wait, was I right? Is the Abominable Snowman the one from the Rudolph movie? Yes, you are correct. Uh, the Elf okay, Practice cool, movie cool. does have the Abominable Snowman in it, yes. Uh, which which one is the one from Star Wars? I'm sorry, what? Uh, <laughs> the big hairy thing from Star Wars that captures Luke. Chewbacca? And tries to rip. No. What are you, <laughs> no. Do what are you doing? On, on Hoth? On Hoth? Oh my god. Is that the Yeti? <laughs> I... A Wampa? No, not the Wampa. It eats the Wampa, though. Oh my gosh. Are you sh... No, Luke slays the Wampa. No, this thing kills Luke's Wampa, and then uh, Han comes out on his Wampa to save Luke, and he kills his own Wampa. Oh my gosh. Then I. This thing got fifty percent of the wampas. I, I got think it's nothing kind of for you, dude. Important. <laughs> You've successfully confused me. All right. Well, we'll move on. But like, I'll, we'll just say that maybe it's the abominable snowman, maybe it's the yeti, and maybe it's some different Star Wars monster. However, <laughs> the yeti sort of having different names is a pretty common thread. I'd like to talk about the different names really quick before we get into the physical descri dis description, uh, simply okay. because I feel like you can figure out what this thing looks like based on what I'm about to say. Also, okay. deep apologies. I will be butchering these. The internet will not tell me how to pronounce them. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's the Mish, uh, which comes from Man Bear. The Zute, okay. which uh, translates roughly to cattle bear. Um, the Migo, okay. which translates to wild man. The Bun Manchi, which would do uh, Nepali for jungle man. Uh, but that's used outside the Sherpa communities where Yeti would be the more common name. Uh, mm. The Kang Admi, which would be the snowman. And the Zuriren, which would also be the snowman. And the last one I'm going to mention is the Murka, which is another name for wild man. Uh, but I mentioned this one last because local legend states that anyone who sees this dies or is killed. 
mixed that track with Yeti lore? Kind of. We'll get to that. But I do mention that because the statement That's anyone wild. who sees one dies or is killed, uh, but not mentioning that this thing is what's killing them, just does imply that if you see this, you'll go home and just get murdered. Yeah, maybe you'll get murdered. <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, full disclosure, we talked about how this was full, uh, like Final Destination in our first take, um, but we spent about 25 minutes talking about Pokemon, and <laughs> so we decided oh. to just cut it fresh. Um, Don't bring it up, it's <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> um, but it does, it does kind of give those Final Destination vibes where like the end is coming and you can't avoid it. Yeah, it, or maybe it, like the grim. Yeah, grim vibes. The grim, yeah. There's definitely like kind of a, a like mystical element of like, you are condemned once you once you look in its eyes. Yeah. Uh. Well, what do its eyes look like that they're condemning you? That's. The, Hopefully, they're beautiful. That's a good. That is a good question. Because. Does he have luscious eyelashes and? snow blue eyes i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> oh no i don't think so um so okay to sort of unravel the history of this thing i feel like we should start with the fact that uh the yeti was a part of pre-buddhist beliefs of several himalayan people uh specifically the lepcha people worshipped a glacier being as a god of the hunt which is why i said he's possibly a god with question marks uh and that followers of the bon religion once believed that the blood of the mirror god or the wild man had use in certain mystical ceremonies uh and this being was specifically depicted as an ape-like creature who carries a large stone and makes uh, as a weapon and makes a whistling whoosh uh swoosh sound do you think that's the sound of like the stone because you know like when you had those like plastic wiffle ball bats, they'd yeah. make that noise? When you, you throw know? them real quick? Yeah, or when you just swing them real hard? Yeah. Do you yeah, think yeah. the stone makes that noise, or do you think it's him? See, I'd like to think it may be like a sort of byproduct of the fact that this thing is supposed to be covered in hair. Uh, that oh. You get that sort of sound as it ruffles the hair i guess but it also is really funny to think of it like again it's mentioned everyone who sees this thing dies or is killed that it's he sees you and just immediately beams you with a rock and all <laughs> everybody else hears is the swoosh sound <laughs> just beams you with a rock well he's, he's got this filter. like he is god of the hunt so i imagine the aim is like top tier top tier yeah Oh, maybe it's like, you know, those slings, like yeah. the rock slings, they make that noise. Yeah. Maybe it's that. It could be. Maybe just like, <laughs> just beams you. Yeah, just real good. Just like, whips it at you. You can't see The it. original whippets. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh my god. Is this god ape man whipping you in the face of the rock. <laughs> <laughs> the prehistorical bonk filter. <laughs> Good lord. Just Imagine that. Imagine smack. being out hunting and your friend is like, oh my god, oh my god, I think I see him. And then they just immediately just rock. <laughs> they <laughs> just get their like, shit rocked. It like, it's like that video of the kid getting hit with a dodgeball where he like goes up into the air like yeah. when it hits him in the face. Yeah. Oh my god! Like that real ass anime shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm imagining. Oh my god! <laughs> I am just laughing at just being out there and getting beamed by a rock at top velocity from <laughs> from the yeti. Well, here's the here's the thing: is my other like possibility of what it could be is that like. The creature himself makes that noise. And you described it as like a stick. Like a rock that kind of is like a stick. And so it's like kind of like a kid with a lightsaber. Like a stick that he's pretending is a lightsaber. Where he's yeah. like making the like. Vroom, vroom, 
Vroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As he swings it around. Good lord. <laughs> Good lord. Also, I feel like we should mention really quick that, like, if a kid is holding a stick making lightsaber noises with it, you know he's, like, three seconds away from going and just upending another kid with that stick. Same page? Yeah, yeah. Same page. <laughs> Yeah, I know he's, like, literally, like, a moment away from, like, clubbing another kid in the back of the kneecap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No. Uh, but I mentioned I mentioned that specifically so we can get the uh, sort of ape-like creature with a large stone weapon that makes a whistling swoosh sound. We get a little bit more of a specific description when we start to get to the 19th century, because all of that information is pre-19th century. We're going to move up and talk a little bit about the oh 19th boy. century. Oh, yeah. This so thing has, like, a good long history. what's kind of, like, the more modern history. description, then? Wow. Oh, yeah. What's kind of yeah. the more modern description, then? The most modern description are the 19th century one, because you get yeah, pretty the, much the... the same thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I think the only things it gets is more specific, because you start out with just the description of being, like, an ape-like creature in the 19th century, then you get to a more specific... Uh, in 1899 in Lawrence Waddles among the Himalayas uh, where there is a large ape-like creature who leaves prints that look almost like bear prints in size uh, but nobody could give you like a specific answer it was always sort of hmm. like something that somebody heard of which if you want to go with our previous uh, previous point that this thing kills everyone who sees it I imagine that that would be why you can't get anybody who's seen it. Yeah. They're, they're dead, but... Uh, then you get into the 20th century, which is uh, when Westerners specifically started making attempts to scale the mountains in the area. And would see odd creatures or strange tracks. Um, yeah, so this is where you start to get uh, a few more first-hand descriptions. I suppose that is one of the things that go, I think uh, they go is so interesting to me about cryptozoology specifically is like we know that the like native tribes to areas did explore those areas like we know that we know they did but they had a bunch of places where they was like oh that's a sacred yeah. place like don't go there or like that's just a place where you shouldn't go because it's dangerous and like that wasn't always articulated into yeah. to like the westerners in a way that was documented and so when that like western exploration starts to happen that's when like we get a lot of these sightings like we talked about like squire daniel you know the long hunter who would go out into the like quote unquote wilds and go for hunts for days at a time you know like yeah those people were people that encountered these kinds of cryptids and these kind of monsters, um, which I think is really interesting, actually, I'm going to be honest. I think it's an interesting take that the the lore was there before, but the sightings really increased when these kind of, like, ignorant <laughs> uh, people come through and, and uh, don't Part always of it. heed the warnings may be also that if you live in that area and you've grown up with people telling you that that thing exists, to you it's more of a fact of life. That yeah, things just are the way that they are. But then when people come in for the first time and they see it and they're like, oh my god, what is that? And they're like, oh, like just don't don't fuck with it. And they fuck with it. And they're like, why didn't you why, why, did, you, why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> don't fuck with it. Leave it alone. Don't. Hey, guys. <laughs> We said don't go over there. And it's like, well, we wanted to go over there. Yeah, but it's we like, told we said, you don't not. don't go over there because that's where the man snow bear, man snow, snowman bear lives. Don't go over there. Like, we saw that happen with the lizard man. Yeah. As far as, like, people who kind of lived in the area were like, hey, don't. And then people did. And they were like, oh, my God, it attacked my car. What did you think was going to happen? Like, if people tell you <laughs> yeah, not to go somewhere. said it eats cars, guys. Hey, guys, we said it eats cars. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Interesting. The specific Yeti scalp that was found, or this alleged Yeti scalp, was brought to 
a Professor Frederick Lloyd Jones, an expert in human and comparative anatomy. Uh, so during the study, they bleached the hair, they cut it into sections, analyzed it microscopically, they did all these sort of things. Um, mm -hmm. Found out that these hairs were not actually from a scalp. Oh. Uh, could not pinpoint what animal they were from. Oh. But said that the hair probably didn't come from a bear or, like, an ape. They said instead that it was from the shoulder of, like, a large hoofed animal. An undulate? I believe is the, the scientific, the technical term. That's possible. I mean, yes, that is the technical term for that. But <laughs> specifically, he just said it's a coarse-haired hooved animal and doesn't specify any more than that. So a yak. Some form of, I don't know, yeah. I'm just thinking about something that's a beat. Maybe a donkey? Possibly. I don't consider think horses also, are do well with mountains. Consider also, the honest. Yeti has hooves. <laughs> Maybe the Yeti just does have hooves. <laughs> Maybe the Yeti has hooves. Or like, you know how you get a lot of uh, depictions of like the goat man or centaurs that have hooves on the bottom half? The Yeti has hooves on the top half. And that's why you get <laughs> hair from the shoulder. <laughs> He's got hooves on the top. He's like, got... Imagine that. He's got toes made for running, and then he's got yeah. hooves on the top half. Hooves on the top half. He's ho hoofing it. <laughs> he's going fast. Hoofman Cardor hoof hand. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's the no. second week in a row that we've referenced that, and I think that's. Yeah, but it's sin. good. <laughs> oh, it's good. <sighs> But that's a possible option. Uh, you also get a few sightings. Uh, there's another one in the winter of 1940 where the path was blocked for hours uh, on a couple of explorers by two bipedal animals that were doing seemingly nothing but just kind of shuffling around in the snow. They're playing in the snow. They're just vibing. <laughs> yeah, just vibing. They're just hanging out. Just like me. I'm just vibing right now. I got a lot of just bread. Vibing. Hell yeah. I got bread in me. I got wine in me. It's a good time. You got cheese? I got cheese. Yeah. The cheese I don't know is we... not all in me. Where did it go? Well, some of it's still on the plate. Oh, that's a good point. I was like... I didn't, I didn't eat a lot of the cheese because I'm lactose intolerant. A true mood. I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast earlier, but I am going to mention it now. That you, for dinner, uh, went full medieval peasant. And yeah. baked a tiny loaf of bread and had that with cheese and wine. And yes. you explained this to me and then asked me what I had for dinner. And I had to look you in the face and say that I had three bowls of chips and Pocky. <laughs> that seems and a little less than water. ideal, I'll be honest. Yeah, but I went grocery shopping and I'm too lazy to cook. That is fair. You know what? That's fair. Like, I understand that I have a kitchen that's not even, like, 20 feet from where I'm sitting right now, but I am not going to go there and make anything. Because then mm. I'll have dishes, and that'll suck. Yeah. I'd rather eat three bowls of chips. There's no dip, <laughs> I just eat plain chips. Just plain chips? Sid. Yeah, I don't have dip with chips usually, because most dip. of the dips have dairy in them. That's fair. And I, I can't have that. And I ate all my guacamole. I made guacamole and I ate it all in like one sitting. Oh my god. It was three avocados worth of guacamole. It wasn't a super smart decision, but it was a decision. It's definitely something you did decide to do. <laughs> yeah, I did do that. Uh, but this is a lovely segue into talking really quickly Wait. about the fact that at one point they did attempt to find out what the Yeti eats, by analyzing its fecal matter, um, they found a parasite which they couldn't classify, mm -hmm. and nothing else. What was that? Uh, they attempted to find out what the yeti eats by classif by like analyzing its fecal matter, and they found a parasite they couldn't identify, and nothing else. Oh. Yeah. Oh no. Which is, like, super concerning. 
Yeah. From a lot of from a lot of standpoints. Yeah, it does seem very, very concerning, actually. Because usually you can, um, you can take, uh, um, I suppose you can take like an animal's dander and attempt to find out what they've eaten by analyzing it. Uh, but they yeah. got nothing. It is also fitting to mention. I'm going to mention two things really quick. That. The United States government thought that finding the Yeti was likely enough that they created a series of rules for American expeditions searching for it. Oh? Yeah. Wait, uh, what are these rules? An, Do I need to know them before Nepalese I permit. try to fight the Yeti? Yeah. You do, actually, because you need a permit. Oh, you need a permit. Specifically you need a permit for the Yeti. For the Nepalese government. You do not harm the Yeti in s except in self-defense, and to let the Nepalese government approve of any news reporting on the animal's discovery. Ah. Yeah. So, what and this I'm is hearing... because so many people were assholes. <laughs> so many people were like me and went to go specifically fight this thing. Or they would desecrate... Uh, because the Yeti original is a folklore creature, so there is it is considered to be a possible god of the hunt. In certain cultures, so they have artifacts that would relate to the Yeti in monasteries and, like, temples, and people would go in and just attempt to take these to study them. Ah. See, that's... Which is... That's being a dick. Yeah, <laughs> Like, actively. that is just being a dick. There's one thing to go up in the mountains on an expedition and be like, yo, I saw footprints, and it's another thing to, um... To go into a temple and desecrate it in the name of finding a cryptid that may or may not exist like, yeah yeah there's the oh my god i'm gonna butcher this too the peng botch hand uh which is an artifact from a buddhist monastery in peng botch nepal uh and it is believed to be that the hand is from a yeti okay in 1959 actor james stewart while visiting india reportedly attempt to smuggle the Pangbotch hand by concealing it in his luggage when he flew from India to London. The fuck? Yo. Yeah, no, not... Not cool, actually. Not cool. Like, so, like, we make fun of these, you know, boys sometimes. Like, we're out here and we make fun of these creatures, these critters. But we're not trying to, like, disrespect people like we're not taking things from people we're just having a little bit of fun and talking about some cryptids so i mentioned that and i do mention uh 1960 sir edmund hillary mounted the 1960 to 61 silver hut expedition to the himalayas which was to collect and analyze physical evidence of the yeti he borrowed a supposed yeti scalp from the kyung jung monastery and then himself and the village headman combo chumbi I'm assuming I'm probably butchering these. Again, I'm so sorry. The internet will not tell me how to pronounce them. The internet is not very helpful sometimes. Uh, and brought the scout back to London, where a small sample was uh, removed for testing. And then uh, there was a detailed explanation of the sample of skin from the uh, alleged scalp, alleged Yeti scalp, uh, that compared it with similar samples to a few different types of bears. And uh, it was found that the sample was probably made from the skin of an animal closely resembling the Cero, but definitely not identical. Interesting. So, uh, a Cero, the Himalayan Cero, is a goat antelope native to the eastern Himalayan region. Um, so that is a cloven hooved animal. The fur would have been found on the shoulder of it. Okay. But if it's not similar, we do kind of have to look in the and consider that the Yeti may have hooves. Now, bear somewhere. with me. Mm hmm. Bear with me. This is not bird no, theory. No, they said it wasn't a bear. No. I, this is not bird theory, but it is going to be an interesting theory. Okay, hit me, hit me. Maybe it's related to these. Uh, what did you call them? The Saros? The Saros. Maybe it's related to them. Maybe it's one that just started standing up one day. It's like, hey, this works. 
Like, because you know, like, there are hooved animals that have, like, multiple toes? Yeah. Like, horses specifically do not, because their leg is just one big finger. But. Yes. A lot of other cloven uh, animals do have multiple toes. Like, I know that pigs do, and, like, so it's possible that it could have evolved, like, actual, like, toes on its feet. And that, that would explain yeah. the smaller foot size as well, given the fact that cloven or like hooved animals have a hoof that is roughly the same size, if not a little bigger, than their leg. So if that creature has a seven foot or seven inch long, four foot, four inch across um, sort of stump, I suppose that would imply that they would be taller or that their leg would be four inches across at the bottom bit. Mm-hmm. Which is, would kind of track to something being roughly about seven or six feet tall. Now, also... That does scare me a little bit, because that does imply that this thing can climb real fast. Yeah, kind of like, like goats. (laughs) Yeah. Like a goat. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's another theory, Sid. And I will warn you. This one is bird theory. Because going off of this, maybe one of the reasons it lives in the mountains and can climb real good is because it's much like a lot of the kind of uh, winged dinosaurs that we saw as predecessors to the pterodactyl and others, um, which couldn't fully um like run and fly um yeah some of them were big enough that they could just pretty much jump into flight um because they were like 30 feet tall that is super terrifying that is super terrifying but this thing seems a little bit smaller so maybe it needs to climb and jump yeah maybe and maybe it's a bird I do have to consider the implication of something seven feet tall leaping off a mountain and flying at me, which is very scary. (laughs) It does make sense now that if you looked at it, you would probably die. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'd die from shock. (laughs) Like if something jumped at me that was that big and started flying at me from a mountain, I think I'd just explode also, the fact that bird theory would have been true if it jumped at the mountain and flew at me, I think that would do enough to just shock me <laughs> <laughs> to death. Now, I am I am going to go back on myself a little bit here and say that I don't think bird theory is very likely for this creature. Um, because it there are a lot of references to it, like even holding like a stone or a weapon specifically, like yeah, as as the god of the hunt, right? But it is possible that it isn't specifically an ape-like creature, um, but the only reference they might have had to a bipedal animal that big was an ape or a human. Yeah. I... I'm sorry, I'm still stuck on the bit where I walk into the mountains, I'm climbing the Himalayas, it is an incredible journey, and then something jumps out of the mountains at me at full speed, and it's seven feet tall, and I die. Uh, <laughs> I feel like we can't overlook that. I mean, it is a little bit terrifying at the, at the it least. It is very terrifying. At the least, they... yes, it is very terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. However, the belief in the Yeti is very common in Bhutan, and in 1966, uh, they made a stamp to honor the creature. Oh, cool. You can get a cool Yeti yeah. stamp? Yeah. I would love a Yeti stamp. Uh, I mean, I think it would only work in Bhutan, though, because it's a specific stamp to that country. So I don't think you could mail anything with it here, but I feel like it would be really neat to have. Well, I mean, you could mail from there to here. You could. Or you could just collect the stamp. Do you know that both of my parents used to collect stamps? Because I didn't until like really? a couple days ago. 
and it baffles me. Like, of course they did. They're nerds. Of course they did. Of course they collected stamps. I know <laughs> one of my uh, one of my grandparents used to collect stamps and coins, and I always thought that was so, like so cool. And also, I can't imagine collecting something where I know there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to get all of it. Yes. Like, like I could buy every Pokemon card. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Like, there aren't I'm... billions of them. No, but there are thousands of stamps and thousands of coins, and they're all old and hard to find. And I feel like that would just... Also, I don't think I could display all the stamps in one room, and I feel like... I, like, the things that I do collect, I tend to hang up on walls and put on shelves and things. But if I collected stamps, I don't think... I need a whole house and just plaster the walls and stamps. Be like, hey, you want to come over and see my stamp collection? It's just my house, you know? <laughs> Do you want to see uh, my stamp collection? Oh, I thought that was just a cool wallpaper. No, it's each one's an individual no. stamp that I put there. <laughs> yeah, you just stick it on your wall until the wall is completely covered. And you just repeat for every room of your house. Yeah. Which actually would be a pretty cool wallpaper. Uh, but I digress. <laughs> It would kind of be a cool wall. Like, that might be a dope-ass, cool? like, office wallpaper. Yeah. Like, I'd be down for that for sure, actually. I would be down for that. Like, thinking um, about it. Yeah, I'd love that. Yeah. It's like... And especially if you could get stamps from, like, other countries, too, as well. Because, like, then you've just expanded your stamp collecting range. Yeah, you know? I know. Like, that would be so cool. There is a Yeti. Okay. I do need to know what this Yeti stamp looks like, though. I I will look it up for you really quick and see if I can find it. Ooh, yes. Because uh, it's from 1966, so I don't... Oh my gosh, I found... I think I found it. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, there are different... I think there are different... Um, like, different iterations, I suppose. So I don't know if this is the original, the original... But it's super cool. Uh, it's a triangular stamp. Oh, whoa. Yeah, did you look it up? Yeah, I looked it up and I love it. It's so cool. Oh my gosh, hey, we could get one. There's one from Bhutan as well. Yeah. For the Abominable Snowman. That's so cool. I'm sure this is riveting in the audio medium in which Yeah, no, it's super riveting. If you really want to see it, I'm going to tweet it out right now. Please so can, go look it up. Actually, Please go look it up. Uh, uh, actually, go check our Twitter for it, because I'm, I'm going to tweet it out right now. Yeah, it's so cool. If you love nerdy cryptid shit being tweeted out while we're recording, um, definitely our Twitter is a place to go, at <laughs> OnCryptids. Um, we do not hesitate. We, I certainly do not. I'm like, this is a thing, I'm going to tweet it. And Sid sometimes tells me not to, but a lot of the time it just goes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay, do we have any sightings? Is something I really want to ask. We've been through most of the sightings. Really? As far as, like, most of them are footprints. Ah, because a lot of the evidence is mostly, uh, because this creature is technically folklore, mm -hmm. a lot of the sightings you get are footprints or, like, artifacts that people have collected uh, that are said to be from the creature. Mm. Uh, if we want to get to, like, so you get a lot of footprints, you get a lot of, like, uh, possible scalps and possible dander. Um, however... Uh, I can mention one thing in 1983. Uh, Himalayan conservationist Daniel C. Taylor and Himalayan natural historian Robert L. Fleming Jr. led a Yeti expedition mm -hmm. uh, into Nepal's Barun Valley, uh, discovered similar Yeti-like footprints, hominid appearing with a bipedal gait, uh, intriguing large nests and trees, and vivid reports from local villagers of two bears uh, and that were like two different bear species. 
Hmm. Uh, one of which was, or it was believed to be two different bear species. There's a tree bear, which is smaller and reclusive, uh, weighing about 150 pounds, and a ground bear, which was aggressive and pushing 400 pounds. Oh. Big lad. So, yeah. Uh, they found out that these are both bears that come from the same species, the Asiatic, I think, Asiatic black bear. Uh, which have no morphological difference, even though there's like a 250 pound difference wow. in between them in weight. Jeez. So the Yeti could be a large bear. Could be. Could be a large Maybe bear. Maybe it is a large bear. Because I would really, this would be the point in which we uh, get into sightings, but most of the sightings we have are either are either footprints or uh, artifacts that people have collected. Yeah. And that are believed to be from the creature, given the fact that it had a position as being a possible god of the hunt. You know? Yeah. Like, you don't really see gods just kind of walking around, <laughs> I suppose. I guess <laughs> That's not, not quite a gods, common sight. For sure. No. It's kind of a thing with the, like, Greek and Roman gods, though. Well, yes, but they also believed that the gods lived on a very climbable hill and no one thought to check. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just such a cool... a cool creature in, like, every aspect. The snow part? Because there's... <sighs> yes. <laughs> Definitely the snow part. The snow part's because pretty the cool. Amount, also that there is like tradition. There's like art done of the yeti. Oh yeah. Like art done of the yeti because like you know what you think of as the yeti, right? Yes. Like a very large creature, and some of the art does depict it like that. It isn't depicted with white fur. It is again usually that like reddish fox brown fur. But there is so much art, and it is so cool. All of it. Like, there are sculptures, there... It's really incredible. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely, like, a thing to do on, like, a Saturday night when you've got nothing else going on. Just, like, look up some of the, like, art for some of these cryptids. Like, we've definitely talked about it with, like, the Tizaruk. Uh, We talked about it with... um, you know, a couple of the other ones, uh, but there is so much incredible art, like, especially with things that really, um, originate from these, like, folk tales, right? It really yeah. is something that is, is so incredible, um, and it's so interesting. Um, so definitely go put in the time and, and look into that, because it's, it's well worth it. It's well worth a Saturday evening. Maybe bake yeah. yourself a and little bread the... and some cheese and some wine. <laughs> and go look up cryptids. <laughs> go look up that's cryptids. what I did that's tonight, and it was great. That's what I do. <laughs> that's what I do. But, like, especially because we're probably going to be, in the future, getting into cryptids that may not necessarily have a lot of sightings. It is really cool to have a portion of the show where we can just kind of go and explore certain elements of, like, where they came from and like the stories behind them yeah it with creatures like this who maybe don't have a whole lot of sightings but instead have an incredibly rich and intricate history with fantastic art it's it's so cool like this is my shit (laughs) i love this i like i don't know if it comes across but like i do really like the yeti as a creature and like I took I took a folklore class last semester, and we did have an entire subunit on the Yeti and all of the different stories in it, and it's it's incredible. So if you guys do find yourself with a chance of like taking a little bit of a deeper dive, I would highly recommend that you do so. Yeah, it is well well worth Definitely. it. It's so cool. There's a lot of stuff that yeah. we don't have time to talk about in, like, an hour-long show. Like, we're already hitting, like, 50 minutes right now. Um, and we don't always have time to talk about everything. But, like, there's definitely so much that 
that we like that is is just such an, such incredible stories and such incredible history um that oftentimes doesn't get looked into by like your normal history class uh especially here in the u.s um where we're yeah. both from like <laughs> you know we don't get to go into this kind of like this i guess a native history as well is, is something we oftentimes gloss over in our education um well, and there's also the fact that folklore tends to be pushed a little bit to the wayside when it comes to doing history, because a lot of times people only want to hear about the facts. Folklore is an entirely separate genre of study yeah. that is incredibly intricate and nuanced, and not what you'd think it would be, too. Because a lot of times when people think of folklore, they have a very specific, uh, I think more Germanic view of folklore. But if you really, really get into it and look, there are so many interpretations and so much... Like just cool shit. There is a, that there's you can a reason just by exploring. There's a very Germanic take on folklore, and that is because uh, there were two German brothers who decided they were gonna go and they were gonna grab every single German folk tale that they could find and consolidate it into one big book. Um, and they did this yeah, for the Grimm brothers, isn't it? Yep. Yep. They did this for. <laughs> I took um, that class. <laughs> nationalism, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> it really helped consolidate so, like the German identity though, so or the Western identity in total. Like in in, in fairness, it just really had a big effect on on the Western identity. Um, I mean Yeah. I mean, long story short, y'all go explore folklore. Yeah. Go learn something. It's definitely we hope you learn something and new here. We're here too. to talk about that kind of stuff every week here, every Tuesday. Um on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify. And that might have been the cleanest Whoa. segue I've ever made into our post credits. <laughs> God bless. Don't fuck it up. We gotta keep oh, going. Wait. <laughs> keep going. We can do this. Um, so yeah, if you really enjoyed this, um, go follow us on Twitter. We mentioned a little bit earlier at on cryptids on Twitter. Uh, we tweet when our episodes go live. We tweet random facts about quip cryptids. Uh, we tweet uh, just random things that you happen. tweeted a desire to love cryptids earlier <laughs> yes i did i love all cryptids they're so good um they are and we also tweet when we go live on our streams which happen yeah. uh every thursday 8 30 to 10 30 uh on our twitch channel uh the midcast uh we also stream or you specifically stream on saturdays yes. i think yep for overwatch also 8 30 to 10 30 um i'm working on getting that changed but right now it is eight to ten. Uh, we're I'm gonna nice. try and push it to be a little bit of an earlier time, um, so yeah. that we have more we time students. together. If you guys want to hang out, um, yeah. But yeah, so it's a we blast. Do stream. We really enjoy hanging out with you guys when we do the Twitch. It's really fun to see how this community is coming together, um, and I yeah, we would love to see you guys all there. Um, again, that is twitch.tv slash the midcast and mid is spelled M Y D. Um, so yeah, we want to thank everyone yeah. who came out last week and, uh, we look forward to seeing you again this week. Um, is there anything else, Sid? No, I think that just about covers it. We hope you guys learned something this week and we really appreciate all your continued support on the show and everything we do. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening and hanging out with us. Uh, definitely go look up the Yeti and the folklore if you've got yes, the chance. And uh, definitely do. We'll see y'all in the and, woods. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see y'all in the, the woods. woods.